for example, number 10, well, let's, uh, let, let's plot the region of integration or the path, or rather, okay, uh, second, we get rid of the internet, I don't need it, okay. So, uh, <clears throat> so let's plot the, this, this path, right, number one, so, mm -hmm. let me plot, um, We plot a um, Cartesian plane, okay? Cartesian plane with the point, the triangle comprised by the origin 1, 1, I mean 1, 0, 0, 1, and it's oriented counterclockwise. So let's draw the triangle first and indicate the orientation counterclockwise with arrows like. Like this, like that, and like that, not the other way around. So even though yes, it's even though it's a triangular pattern here, the the clockwise kind of clockwise, which sounds a lot more like a circle wall, we still have some orientation, you know. So okay. So what what are we what do we want to evaluate here? Find the total work done by that horse XY into moving the particle from the point, okay, let me, from the point zero, zero, that's the origin, the point one, zero, and the point zero, one. So let's call this C1, C2, and C3. So what are we going to do? We are going to evaluate three line integrals into one because look at the, look at the trajectory. The trajectory is not smooth but we can make it smooth piecewise, you know? So it's smooth from the point zero zero to the point one zero, but then you have this sharp corner, then you need another parameterization from one zero to the point zero one, and then notice it's no longer smooth at that point, so you need to, uh, to go back to the origin along C3. Uh, that's gonna give us, uh, that's going to require us to come up with another parameterization of that line. All right, so what's the sketch of the problem? Number one, so that is the integral along C of F dotted with T dS. So what do we need to do? Well, evaluate FDR. Along C. And well, since in this case we need we have three different lines, C1, C2, C3. So we're going to break this up into the integral of FDR along C1 plus the integral along C2 and the integral along C3. All right. So that's the sketch of the problem. All right. So let's let's uh, parameterize each um, each 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 path. C one. Okay. Let's start with C one. Okay. So so let me label C one. And because all these three trajectories, C one, C two, and C three, are lines, and that's a horizontal line, a diagonal line, and a vertical line. The easiest way to parameter a lot, to parameterize lines again, it's using the terminal minus initial. So, uh, one way to visualize this is yes, okay, from from t equals zero, t equals one, t equals two, and t equals three. However, if I go zero, one, two, and three, I would be I would be complicating the problem more than more than it could potentially be. So, again. The easiest way to parameterize when it comes to lines is just go between zero and one. The minute you run into a sharp corner, game over, start over, C2 from zero to one. Game over, start over, C3 from zero to one, all right? You, you, how do we do that? Using the terminal minus the initial. Well, so number one, to parameterize uh, C1, we would need to define the vector AB, all right? So that is going to be, okay, terminal minus initial, 1 minus 0 is 1, 0 minus 0 equals to 0. So I need to write that, um, that equation of the line R, R of t. 
in parametric form or as a vector valued function. So that would be, okay, uh, in this case, the, the direction number that is 1t plus the initial point 0, comma, 0t plus 0. And while well, simplifying this, this is the vector t0, which is where t is between 0 and 1. Again, every time you parameterize a line, horizontal, vertical, diagonal, doesn't matter, uh, using terminal and initial point, you will always be parameterizing within the limit 0 to 1, which simplifies the work a lot because that means that when it comes to working the integral, one of the limits, well in this case the lower limit, is 0. And well, again, it's one of the wishes come true when we have one of the limits to be 0 for this kind, for this kind of integrals because it makes the work uh, a lot easier. Okay, so the RDT in this case, again, for a line integrals, Type 2, uh, we use the RDT, the, the Leibniz notation, but I'm going to go straight to the, to the differential. The derivative of this vector will be 1, 0, dt, okay? And, well, what do we have? f of x, y, again, this force that depends on x and y, which is the vector x, y, where did I get that from? Well, it's given, all right? It's given... So that's the driving force that moves the particle from the origin around this triangle in a counterclockwise direction. All right, so, but I need to replace these instances of x and y in terms of t. So that means, okay, so all x's that come, all x's are going to be the t's and all y's are going to be replaced with zero. So that's going to take us to the vector, oh, again, t zero, uh, t comma zero. That is going to be our f of t. Okay, so that'll be t zero. Okay. All right, so I think we have everything we need to evaluate the line integral. So we want to evaluate the integral along c1 of f dr. All right, f dr, where f, what's f? f in terms of t, that is the integral of the vector t0 dotted with, uh, what's that? 1, 0, dt, from 0 to 1, because we're going along c1 with whose limits of integration go between 0 and 1 again. That's because we parameterize our line using the terminal minus initial. All right. Okay, so, hmm. Okay, let's do this dot product. So that is t times 1. That's the integral uh, of t. 0 times 0, that's 0. So I'm just going to go with t, dt, from 0 to 1. That means t squared over 2 from 0 to 1, which means 1 squared over 2 minus 0 squared over 2, which equals 1 half. All right? So we have our first result, right? The part of the work done by the force, by this driving force into moving the particle for now, just along C1. We need to repeat this process two more times for C2 and for C3. All right, how about we go back and bookkeep the results, okay? That's one half, right? Plus, okay, we need to figure out these two. Let me put a bar to divide this. Okay, let me go about C2, okay? So C2, that is, okay, let me start over with vector AB, okay? Vector AB, let me call this, I, I know, this should be A, B, and T, but I want to do A, B, C, and C. Let's, let's call AB, AB all the time. So that'll be the vector, oh, 0 minus 1, isn't that negative 1? 1 minus 0, isn't that 1? Okay, so that's the vector negative 1, 1. Careful, because we are in C2, where the terminal is 0, 1, and the initial is 1, 0. And just in case uh, uh, it's not clear where, how, I, why did I get that vector, all right? Okay, let's write down our vector valued function, R of t, that describes C2. So that'll be the direction vector, negative 1 times the variable t, plus the initial value, which is in this case a 1, comma, uh, the direction number, that is 1 times t, 
plus the initial, which is zero in this case. Careful, because the initial point is the second point. It's the first pan terminal point. Just be careful. Again, we're we're going between one zero to zero one. All right. Okay, let's simplify these minuses and zeros. So this will be one minus t, comma t. Okay. Let's take the derivative, or rather the differential dr. That'll be negative one one dt. Okay, negative one one dt, and this will be okay. F of x y. Okay, again, this is our f of x y. Our driving force needs to be written in terms of x and and in terms of t's. Okay. So in this case, careful, because our x is going to be different. Our x is going to be 1 minus t, and our y will be t, okay? So our f of t, it's no longer an f of xy. It's a function of t. That'll be 1 minus t, comma, t. So we have everything we need. We need to set up the line integral and evaluate it. All right. So the integral of f dr, f dotted with dr, that's on the integral oh, along c2, along c2 this time. Okay. Well, I'm gonna go between zero and one again. <clears throat> so f, which is so one minus t, t dotted with uh, the differential negative 1, 1 dt. All right. Whoops. And well, let's do the dot product right here. That's the integral from 0 to 1. 1 times negative 1 minus, I mean, 1 minus t times negative 1. That's going to give us a t minus 1 reverses t minus 1. And t times 1, that's plus t dt. So that'll be the integral from 0 to 1 of 2t plus 1 dt. And this integral happens to be equal to 0. All right. I'm going to skip the details. I'm just going to show you the, the what matters the most here is the setup. So let's keep bookkeeping the, the result. So our second integral will be 0. All right. We need to repeat this one more time. Uh, did one last time for C3. Now, for C3, uh, that, that means to go between the point 0, 1 to the point 0, 0, back to the origin. And again, careful, the terminal point is 0, 0, the origin and the initial point is 0, 1. How do we know if that, that's, uh, that's initial, that's a terminal? Well, that's because uh, this is... Um, uh, it's going in this direction. So this is the origin. I mean, this is back to the origin, the end point, and this is the initial. All right. So let's describe C2, C3, rather. Let me call this AB again, even though yeah, they could be ABC. No problem. So that'll be... Um, what's that? Um, terminal, which is 0 minus 0, that's 0. And 0 minus 1, that's negative 1. So our R of t <laughs> will be, okay, so 0 times t plus the initial, which is also 0, comma, negative 1 times t plus the initial y, which is of 1. So that means we're going to get the following, 0, 1 minus t. So that is our parameterization for C3, using terminal minus initial as a direction vector, and well, you know how to parameterize lines, all right? So, <clears throat> all right. Uh, so what else do we need? Oh, the differential, dr, that equals the derivative, which is zero, the derivative, which is negative one, dt. And then again, let's call for, what's that? Uh, our driving force in terms of x, y, and write it again in terms of t in accordance with our parameterization that we just came up with. All right. So would that be well again? Let me highlight so you can see how we how we do the substitution. So uh, x 
is replaced with zero, the x component, and y is replaced with one minus t, which is the y component, all right? So, oh, let me, let me write it down. F of t, that is x, which is zero, one minus t, which is, which is what, which is y. All right, so again, we have everything we need to set up the line integral and evaluate it and calculate the part of the work done by the driving force along C3, which is the vertical line. All right, so let's see. Uh, the integral along C3 of F dotted with dr, that is the integral from zero to one of F, which is, 0 comma 1 minus t and dr which is 0 negative 1 dt again another dot product 0 times 0 that's just 0 the integral from 0 to 1 and the integral and times 1 minus t times negative 1 careful that's a t minus 1 dt and the final answer the result for this integral is negative 1 half all right <clears throat> Okay, let's go back to where we were setting up our problem here, to the top of the page, and plus negative one half. Oh, a half plus zero plus negative a half, what is that equal? Zero. All this work is to get zero, right? Hmm. Anyway, uh, I know, it, it's, it, it's, there are situations you do all this work for pretty much nothing, I mean literally for nothing, so the work done is zero, but I mean what does that mean? I mean there, there's a driving force, we're going from the origin back, back to the origin, how the work done is zero, well that's because in, uh, uh, in some of the, of the different paths it's positive, in some of them it's a nothing, and when even this out well, it's, it's total of zero. All right, uh, actually, well, this will be powerful, there will be a powerful theorem behind this, uh, like, I, like I told you last time, or a couple of days, I don't know, I don't know when. So what I like about this chapter is how every follow, every next section teaches you the shortcut, not the shortcut, or the short way to solve the problem you did in the previous section. So this problem, which took us, what was that, 20 minutes already? Yeah, 19 minutes. So we're gonna do it in a blink of an eye when we cover with that section 17.3, the fundamental theorem of line integral. But first we need to, uh, to see how it works and to do it the hard way. You know, like when you took derivatives using the limit definition, remember that nightmare? And then, oh, general power rule, the shortcut rules, which are not shortcuts really, but uh, they were a, a relieving way to take derivatives. So we will evaluate line integrals in a very relieving way rather than setting all this up and all for nothing, for getting a zero. Uh, anyway, okay, let's wrap up this section with line integrals in differential form. These are line integrals typed Three. All right, type three. Okay, so again, and in this case, this will be an alternative to type uh, to type two in a way because this integral actually happens to calculate the work done by a driving force. Because again, we're going to have a, a vector. If you recall that for integrals. Uh, line integrals type one, there is no driving force. Again, that represents something else. It's the area under the kerning created by the curve in space or in the plane, you know? So anyway, so the integral of f dr, so for instance, if we have this f right here, which is which has components f of x, y, and g of x, y, or in space, of course, this can be extended for integrals in space. And then we have this R of T that describes the trajectory of an object traveling along that trajectory. So again, this line integral will calculate the work done by this driving force into moving a particle along this trajectory. Okay, so let's find some differentials here, some derivatives. Okay, so what if... Um, what if we take the derivative dr dt? What is that going to be? Number one, dx dt, comma dy 
dt. Now, if we were to find the differential for this, no, we don't need the differential yet. Okay. So, <clears throat> so what is, uh, well, actually, it would be a good idea if we do the differential dr will be simply dx dy. That will be a shorter derivation, actually. All right. So, okay, what is f? f is just uh, a vector, so that's a c, a long c of f comma g, dotted with the dr vector. Okay, but by the way, it's a vector, not a scalar, careful. And it will be what? dx comma dy, okay? And well, let's do the dot product between these two vectors. And is that a dt? Yeah, dt. Okay, so this will be <clears throat> the integral of along C of F. Well, there's no dt actually. F dx plus G dy. All right, so that's our second version of a line integral. No, it's not a typo. There's no careful because there's no, you might be thinking, are there, are there supposed to be parentheses here? No, that's the notation for a line integral type 3 f dx plus g dy. Here is where we see this uh, each, comp each term of the integrand uh, in differential form because we have a differential for x and a differential for y. It's just a different way to denote uh, a line, a, a, a type two line integral. You'll see how it's going to work. You will see the resemblances um, as we um, as, as we go with, with the example we're going to work. But and again, this can be extended in R3 as f dx plus g dy plus z, oh no, h dz, all right? Three components. It's the same. Actually, uh, the example we're going to cover about uh, type 3 line integrals will be one in space. All right. Okay, so... Let's evaluate this integral. Oh, by the way, I was just I just said there is not supposed to be parentheses there, but uh, I forgot to delete the parentheses here from my from the notes, from the from the code of the notes, but anyway, just ignore those parentheses. So they're asking us to evaluate the line integral z squared dx plus x squared dy plus y squared dz, where c is a line segment that goes from the point 1, 0, 0 to the to the point 4, 1, 2. So then evaluate the integral along the same line, but going in the opposite direction. Okay, you'll see what's gonna what's that gonna look like. Okay, number one. So from here, what do we get? We get the driving force f. And be careful because notice the order: dx, dy, dc. This is our f. This is our g, and this is our h. So that'll be z squared plus a uh, comma x squared, y squared, okay? So we still need to parameterize this line segment. Well, uh, lucky for us, they are telling us a line segment. What do we do? Terminal minus initial, terminal minus initial, you know? So <clears throat> let's, let's come up with the vector AB. So the vector AB, that'll be, um, 4 minus 1 equals to 3, 1 minus 0 equals to 1, 2 minus 0 equals to 2, okay? And then what else? <clears throat> so what else do we do? Oh, parameterize the line. R of t. So that'll be 3t plus the initial, which is 1, 1t, which is just t plus the initial, which is 0, comma, 2t plus the initial, which is zero. I'm not gonna write the zero, right? And this for sure tells us it's gonna go for, for t between zero and one, all right? So what you wanna do in this case is to write this vector valid function as a set of parametric equations, okay? So this is the same as saying x equals 3t plus one, y equals t and z equals 2t. So what are we going to do? We're going to find the differentials, the dx. Okay, let's find the dx. dx, which is the derivative of 3t plus 1, that's just 3. 
times dt. So because we were finding a differential, not a derivative. Uh, dy. That is the derivative of t, which is just 1, times dt, which is just dt. And lastly, dz, which is the derivative of 2t times dt, the derivative of 2t, with respect to t, that's 2, dt. Okay? So these are going to be our differentials. All right? So how about we do the substitution? I mean, because we know what, okay, we know what x is. Let me highlight. This is our x, all right? This is our y. And this is our, what's that? Uh, what color are you? Okay, here, our z. So we're going to substitute our z here, our y there, and lastly, our x in here. So it's just substitution, substitution. I mean, not, not even a u substitution, it's just like, writing into everything in terms of t and we just found our <clears throat> our uh, what's that our differentials in terms of f our differential for x our differential for y in terms of t and lastly our differential for oops uh yeah yeah anyway for z okay what was that? Is that a red? No. Middle green. Okay. Which is this one. All right. So let's substitute. So the integral along C of Z squared dx plus x squared dy plus y squared dz. That equals, okay, let's write Z in terms of, in terms of T. That is the 2T. 2t quantity squared, okay, 2t quantity squared, dt, okay, the differential dx, it's uh, 3dt, all right, plus x, the quantity x, what's x in this case, 3t plus 1, that is, 3t plus 1, quantity squared, times dy, but what's dy, simply dt, no coefficients at all, and lastly, uh, what is y, in this case, y equals to t, quantity squared, dz, which is to dt. Notice how we wrote this integral in terms of just t, okay? So, oh, and we're integrating, of course, between 0 and 1. Why are we integrating between 0 and 1? Because we're integrating along the line segment given by the point A and B, and again, Recall that when we're parameterizing a segment from point, from terminal point and initial, in terminal minus initial rather, the limit of integration will always be zero to one, all right? So let's simplify this, uh, this integral right here. Notice how we have a, uh, what to call um, a common factor of dt. So that's the, it's the integral from zero to one. So this will be, okay, careful. What is this? So this is for, t squared, not just t squared, so 4 t squared times 3, is that 12 t squared plus binomial squared, that is 9 t squared plus 60 plus 1 squared, which is 1, and plus t squared times 2, that's 2 t squared dt. So all we need here is simplify, um, it, uh, or rather combine like terms. That's going to give us the following result. That equals the integral from 0 to 1 of 23 t squared plus 6t plus 1 dt. Okay? That equals 35 over 3. All right? Yeah, we don't want to spend the whole lecture integrating this polynomial and doing upper limit and lower limit. I'm just going to give you the result. At this point in time, you guys know how to integrate this, right? So, well, they're asking us to find the, int the value of the integral in the opposite direction. So, in the opposite direction, what do you think the result will be? Negative, Negative 35 thirds, right? So, the integral in the opposite direction That is, the integral of f dotted with dr 
These are vectors along C that equals negative 35 over 3. All right, so what did we do here? Okay, what did we do in this section? Well, we learned about a new type of integral. No new methods of integration. It's the same method, the same general power rule, potentially the same use of, the same tricks of, the same partial fraction, the same integration by part, of course. I mean, but really we learn about a new integral, but more like what does that represent in the same. Again, for to summarize this, uh, orientation, uh, the orientation of the curve matters when evaluating the line integrals for, for vector fields because the vector field, again, it's a driving force that may push an object or actually keep an object from moving, you know, and, well, we want to know what's the effect. The negative result, well, that's, uh, that's actually the object going in the opposite direction to the driving force, while the positive result is the object going in, in the direction of the driving force, right? Yes. How would we write, like, the, I guess, like, the setup integral for that? Would we, like, split uh, the, the limits of integration, like, mm -hmm. to get the opposite direction? Or? Oh, yeah, or, or simply, no, you will just get zero to one. However, this will be B, this will be A, so you will have the vector, what is that? Uh, okay, 1 minus 4, that's negative 3. 0 minus 1, negative, so the vector in the opposite direction. Okay. And the parameterization will have the same vector uh, the same with the same direction numbers that multiply the variable t with opposite in sign. But the, uh, in this case, the constant terms will no longer be the points or I mean the coordinates of the of this point, but rather four, one, and two. So that's how it's going to look different, and you should get the same result, but with the opposite in sign. All right, Thank you. Mm, no problem. So okay, so and and again, an orientation is not going to matter when evaluating the line integrals with respect to the arc length, because again, this type one integral calculates the area of the fence or the curtain created by a curve in space as opposed to finding the work done. So notice no physics in type one integrals. It's just the area under the fence, all right?